In this video, we're going to do an overview of how you will utilize and enter information into the summer camp interventions inside of Unified Insights. I must first start out by saying this video should be used for training purposes only, that no real students or data is displayed in this video as this is from a sandbox server of fake students and fake information. So any likeness to any real student is purely coincidental. So when you log into Unified Insights, our MTSS interventions is going to be located up under the utility apps and you want to look for MTSS interventions. Now, when you first log in, until you actually activate and have been attached to an intervention, you will not see anything down here. So here's some just data that's from our sandbox. So when we start off with a blank slate, the first thing that you're going to want to do is start a new intervention. So keep in mind that we have two different interventions that we're going to be running this summer. We're going to be running the summer math camps inside of here, and we're going to be running the summer reading camps inside of Unified Insights. For each of those camps, we have them broken down by grade level so that you can see them um, holistically by grade. Um, we really had to do that for the summer because the goals that are broken down are broken down by scores for each of the assessment vendors, which have different score benchmarks for every grade level. So what is best practice and what is recommended is that you first, someone starts off each of those interventions, the summer math camp for each grade level and the summer reading camp for each grade level off at, let's say, district office. Okay, because if you will start an intervention here inside of the interventions and add staff to them, then everybody who's been added to that intervention can add individual students. So you can make the decision of, do you want it to be an admin at a school or a district office who adds the students into the intervention? Or do you want to be able to allow the teachers who are making the decisions about which students are going to be going to the summer camps to actually add each of them in? Now, there's two layers of security in here that comes into effect. One video is going to talk about um, the side of the CIS, and this video is talking specifically about the Unified Insights piece. So let's go ahead and start our math camp intervention here. So once I log in and go to the all interventions, I'm going to click this start new intervention button. And it's going to have pretty much all of them. It defaults you over here to the intervention bank, and you're going to find the correct intervention. Now, you're going to see all of the summer camps loaded in with all of the actual MTSS interventions. So almost 300 interventions inside of here. Uh, it might be over 300 by the time we get them all in. What you'll need to do is search and you can search for name. So if you just want to put summer inside of there, you'll be able to find it. Um, if you are reading, you can search by vendor, you'll be able to find it. So here I actually have my reading one here. So I'm going to say use this plan. And this is where we're going to start structuring it. Now, I know that there is the name up here. And when everybody was in training, the trainer showed how you could read name interventions. Um, but in these cases, you don't want to do that. You want everything to be under this state name because each year we will put out a new one with a new year tag to it to differentiate these. But you want to keep them as the state name so that you see it all compiled together. Because you can actually have one huge intervention started with every kid. So every first grader across your district that's going to have to go to summer math camp can be dumped in here. And then once you disseminate what teachers are going to be facilitating the first grade, you will control what students each teacher sees by who's on their roster in the CIS. So that's covered in another video, but there's two layers of this. So one layer gets the staff in here so they can all see this intervention, but they're only going to be able to see the students they have roster. So even if you have 200 first graders in here and I've got Stacy Royster as a staff member with a roster of only 20 kids when she goes into this intervention she's only going to see those 20 kids to be able to mark on but what's great about that is that as a principal of the school or even as a curriculum coordinator at district office when you come in here to look at the diagnostics of the intervention you'll be able to see everybody holistically for your group. So if you're district, you'll see everybody in the district in that first grade. And if you are principal at one school, you'll see everybody in the school in that one grade. 
So here's what we'll want to do. You need to start off with one student. And I know right now, if you're wanting to get these kicked up here before the end of school, you might not know who all the students are. So you can just start with a student that you definitely know is going to be in the camp or just pick a, what I'm going to call a token student, somebody to put them in there that you can remember before you get started to take them out. Because yes, you can delete a student out of an intervention as long as you've entered no data on them. So this will allow it to be kicked off and created so that then all of your staff members can see this. So I'm actually just going to go find a student. I'm type in Smith and yep, we got some Smiths. So I'm just going to add this student. So you can add students one at a time. You can add them from groups. You can add them and I'm going to show a couple of ways how you can add groups of students if you have them all in a list somehow in Unified Insights. So first you select your students. Once you have students or a student, you'll then add staff. So it's automatically going to attribute you, the person who started this intervention, as a staff member. But you'll now want to decide who are all of the staff that you want to be able to use this first grade summer math camp intervention. So you would type in all of those teachers, um, even if you, if you want your, the principals of the building. So think about all of the schools these kids go to and who's going to need to know this. So if it's your reading coaches, your math coaches, put all of them in here who's going to touch any summer math intervention, any summer reading intervention. So let's see if I've got some Smith teachers. Just start typing in names and hopefully we can um, get something, but maybe not. I think all these are called admin in this. It's loading. All right, so all these different users. You would see all of your teachers, so you would add your staff just like that, searching and adding them in. Once you get your staff in, and you could just leave it as you for right now when you get these started, and then add your staff in later because all of this can be edited once it's stood up. Now, when is the start and end date of your summer camp? So your summer math camp, if you're running your summer reading and math camps at the same time, they'll have the same dates when you put both of these interventions in there. If not, you put the dates that they are appropriate. So if your camps were running, you know, May 12th through June, or excuse me, June 12th through July 10th, you would put that in there. I'm actually going to put some back dates in here so that I can put different data in here and show you how this works. So I'm going to pretend that this is in June and that I'm picking June 1st through, you know, June 15th, something such as that. You pick your correct dates and you're going to say start intervention. So as you can see right now, I have my diagnostics dashboard that's going to tell me kind of what's going on with this. And I've right now only got one student inside of here and I've got two staff. So before I come in here to do any work with this one student, I want to get a few more students in here and kind of show you more realistically what this is going to look like. So I'm actually going to leave that page, come back here and go back to the overview dashboard because both from the teacher side, from the admin side, student groups can be made. So if you know students that are going to be in summer camps, as you're having these conversations here for the end of the year, you can create a student group with students. Um, anytime you can get students into a list in here. So for example, I'm just going to click on, on this number of 30 because it'll give me 30 kids in this list. If I were a classroom teacher, I could go just to my list student screen and it would show me all of my students. If I knew that I had all of these students in my class, and again, I see this from the admin side, in Unified Insights, but I also have this kind of view from the teacher side. If this was my whole class that I saw, I could come over here and say, okay, this student, this student, and this student. These three students have got to be in summer math camp this year, in summer first grade math. You can select them, multi-select like I just did, and in this actions, you can actually add them in mass straight into an MTSS intervention you would just have to search for that intervention's name. So the intervention that I have stood up is this one right here. So I'm going to say, yes, please add these students to that intervention. And I'm going to click Add Students. So that's another way that you can add students. You can add them directly when you are creating the intervention, 
or any time within the intervention, or you can add them from within the actual dashboards inside of Unified Insights. Both admins and teachers can do that. So now I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna to have to refresh this screen because it still only shows me that one student. And now you will see I have four students inside of here. So imagine having all of these students, and again, it might be 200 students that you have in this across a district if you're a very large district. It could be that you won't, <coughs> excuse me, only have 20 kids in this intervention for first grade if you're a smaller district. What's going to control as far as the teacher side, what they see when they log in is if these students are rostered on them. So if I have you know, John Smith as a teacher over here and Rika and Kayla is in his class, but Cal is not, and he's going to be facilitating summer math camp, then he will only see these two students to be able to take attendance, mark observations, or mark goals. So in this case, how do we go about doing that? What is the expectation here? Well, first, let me make you understand how you could change dates. So in Unified Insights, you can mark for dates in the past, current date, but not for dates in the future. So if I tried to start and pre-mark something for tomorrow, it would not let me. But I can mark for stuff that happened today, or I can have, you know, mark for stuff that happened yesterday. So I'm just going to say I want to work for, you know, whatever happened on Monday, April 1st. You can do this in as real time as you want or do it at the end. Y'all make the decision of how you want this to be done. First thing you're going to do is take attendance. <coughs> this is one of the big markers that we have for our summer camps. For attendance, you can mark them individually as present or partial or they weren't here at all. And even if you had, let's say I was a teacher over 20 students and they were all there that day, there is bulk options to mark attendance, to set attendance for students. So if I select all of the students here, or maybe one or two, however you wanted to, I can then go to bulk options, set attendance, and it's gonna say, what do you wanna set all of those students to? So maybe I wanna set them to present, okay? So now I'm marking that all of these students, all four students in this intervention did attend summer math camp today. If you want to get specific, and again, you would need to reach out to OMI, they'll give the, the recommendations on do you need, or, need to enter the actual number of minutes they attended. You can do that as well, and you can do it in bulk. So if I needed to say add time attended, and they all attended for 60 minutes today, I could update the minutes, and they're all there. Good thing is there's no save button. You don't have to worry about pressing something extra. As soon as it's entered, it is there. Now for observations. How do we want to know how these kids did today in our math intervention? Were they fully engaged, partially engaged? Were they disengaged? So let's say, you know, Kai didn't have a good time today. Or Cal, excuse me. Cal was very disengaged today. Rika was partially engaged. But Kayla and Brigham were both fully engaged. So you can mark it individually. But again, there's bulk options. So it's really nice that each one of these have the bulk options. And when it comes to the math interventions, that's as far as you have to go. The only thing that OMI is requiring for summer math camp is that you take attendance and possibly use those observations. So again, look at that. There are no goals to mark on the math intervention. So there is a math intervention for kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth that you will load your students into. And this is what your teachers will be able to mark inside of Unified Insights. Now, let's go take a look at a reading intervention. So I'm going to scroll back to the all interventions. So for the reading intervention, on this screen of all the interventions um, in your intervention bank, you're going to go to do the same thing. You want to go, you're, excuse me, going to want to press the start new intervention, choose the reading intervention. I actually have already one started in here with some students attached to it and want to show you the differences in what you document on the students. So for the reading interventions, they are actually separated by vendor. So I've got this here already going. I have 37 students enrolled in this reading intervention. Now with the reading intervention, again, same type of observation dashboard so I can see the average meeting time, my attendance rate, kind of my observations. Okay, so I have my schedule here. 
students here and these 37 students, you'll notice that I've already been marking some information. And because in the reading interventions, there are actual goals to measure against, as you put in data from day to day, you'll start to see these dots progress and see how the students are progressing or not progressing on their actual marks that you are going for. So what I want to do is for each of these days, I want to mark attendance. So again, I can do this in bulk. So I'm going to say everybody was present today and set attendance. I'm going to set my time and say everyone was there for 60 minutes of reading as well. Update minutes. Okay, so attendance is taken for all the students. For my observations, were people fully engaged, partially engaged, disengaged? Today, everybody was on top notch and they were fully engaged. Can add observations. And at any time, if any of these need to be changed, that absolutely can be done. Now the goals. Whereas math didn't have the goals, reading does. This is where you would mark based on each one of these. And we are in a first grade, yes, first grade for M class. So for M classes, benchmark numbers that they're trying to reach, they are different for each one of these different goals. Now, from what I understand from ARI, you're not gonna be working with all those goals. They're gonna be asking you to just do, I think two or three. So again, watch for the video and, and the documentation from ARI on what you'll need to mark in here. But for whichever goal or goals, you have selected that you are going to be marking your students on, or you will want to then enter those scores day by day or however you're doing your intervals. So if we did a progress monitoring assessment in M class today and we know where now where Clint has reached, we could go in and put, so let's say I'm working on accuracy and he's at a 75 right now and on decoding, which is a seven. So whatever it is, I can go in and I can do it singularly. Um, you can do it in bulk if you need to, but just keep in mind, not a lot of kids are probably going to have the same score, so that might not be as feasible. The good thing is, though, because you can have multiple staff in here, you don't have to leave it up to one person to enter all this data in. It is truly like a collaborative document on the students, so that when you have all of that information in, you start to see progress. See, there's the dot for today on these different goals. And notice that on these charts, each one of them show just the same goal. If there's a different goal you wanna look at, you just swap it up here so that you can see. So the biggest part of the interventions to start off with is going to be identifying all the students and getting them attached to the intervention and rostered to the class and the CIS. And again, that direction is in a different video. So I hope this helps for you to have the conversations in your district to see how you're going to collectively get your staff and students into the interventions so that when day one of intervention and summer reading and math camp start, you'll be equipped to go through and start marking progress for your students.